question for you. If I told you I was a spacecraft engineer, what would you imagine that I wore to work yesterday? If I told you I was a software engineer, what do you think I like doing in my spare time? We are here today to change the way you think and to show you that engineering and science isn't all about hard hats and lab coats. This is Isis Anchali. She's what you might call your average 22-year-old woman living in San Francisco in the US. She's smart, she's passionate, she's thoughtful, perhaps a little shy at times. She's a keen hip-hop dancer and counts yoga, singing, and traveling among some of her interests. In 2014, Isis, along with three others, was asked to appear in a recruitment advertising campaign. She said yes, and the very next day, the photographs were taken. It wasn't long before photographs of Isis started appearing all over San Francisco's subway system. But unbeknown to Isis, these photographs were actually being shared a little bit more widely than that. They were starting to appear on social media sites, and not quite for the reasons that they were originally intended. I think they're trying to appeal to women, but are probably actually just appealing to guys, said one user on Facebook. Perhaps that's the intention all along, said another, but I'm curious as to whether people with brains find this quote remotely plausible, and if women in particular buy this image of what a female software engineer looks like. And there it is, what a female software engineer looks like. Isis is a software engineer. She's clearly female. The advert was actually commissioned by her very own company. Isis is not alone. In my own experience, I lost, lost count at university of the number of times people said things to me like, wait, you're a physicist? But you don't look like a physicist. I remember on one occasion being out with a group of girls from my course and someone insisting that we were, in fact, lying when we told him we studied physics. Surely we were English students. Now, I don't doubt that that comment was made with the greatest of intentions. But that's really not the point. Why should I have to look a certain way to be a physicist or an engineer, or anything for that matter? And it's not just what we look like that supposedly defines what we can and can't do. It's also the other things that we do. You may recognize this woman. This is Maya Bialik, who plays Dr. Amy Fowler in The Big Bang Theory. Recently, she was on the red carpet at an awards ceremony when she was pulled aside and interviewed by a TV host. So, Mayim, he said, being on The Big Bang Theory, how many people, not that you aren't a genius, but how many people think that you can solve calculus at the drop of a hat? At this point, Mayim laughed a bit awkwardly, because what this TV host didn't realize is that Mayim has a PhD in neuroscience. She's more than capable of solving a bit of calculus. This whole idea of what we look like or what we do, defining what we can and can't do in life or what we're capable of, is actually pretty powerful. It goes beyond just misinformed TV hosts or careless Facebook users. I'm going to let Vedika now tell you another story about this sort of stereotyping that actually caused more than just a bit of a stir on the internet and actually ended up erasing part of history. Recently, I was lucky enough to meet a lovely woman named Kathy Kleinman. She did computer science as an undergraduate degree at university. Like Sean and I, she was one of the few girls in the room. She was looking for role models and inspiration. And then she came across pictures of the ENIAC. This was one of the first general purpose electronic computers ever built. She saw in pictures that, like this that there were both men and women. The men were credited, the women weren't. When she asked who they were, she was told, oh, they were probably models used for the photograph. Now, Kathy wasn't willing to take this ridiculous answer. She did research on her own, and what she found out was truly inspirational. These two women and several others were the ones who responded to a job advert looking for computers. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange, but back then, a computer was somebody who did calculations manually. They were calculating the trajectories of missiles. This was during World War II, and since most of the men were at war, it was primarily women who came forward to do these jobs. And these two women, along with four others, they also went on to do something way more special than just calculating trajectories of missiles. They were actually chosen to be the first programmers of this very machine. 
Now you have to remember, this is before programming even existed. This is before computers existed. So they were up for a very tough challenge. To add to their problems, they weren't even allowed in the room where the machine was being built because they were women. Yet they made it work. It was an incredible achievement. There is a sad part to the story as well though. Cathy realized that most of them weren't even invited to the 50th anniversary celebration of this very machine. Their stories had been forgotten almost because they were too unbelievable. In fact, when the grandchildren of one of these women told his teacher about his coding genius grandma, even the teacher refused to believe him. These amazing role models have been hidden from the view of young aspiring scientists and engineers, all because of our perceptions of what a scientist looks like. So why are we telling you these stories? Well, we want to show you the effect that this sort of stereotyping has on the career choices that we make as young people. And we want to focus on the girls, because statistically, it's us girls who seem to be shying away from a particular set of careers. Let us now tell you some facts. Now, before I go on, you're going to hear us say the words science and engineering a lot. What we actually mean by these words is all of the subjects that make up the so-called STEM subjects. So that's science, technology, engineering, and maths. A lot of young people, almost as young as 10, have already decided that science isn't for them. At 10. Now, I don't know about you all, but I won't take career advice from 10-year-old me. But it seems like that's the case. They have ruled out this industry that has the best paying jobs, and the industry that has a lot more jobs than people. As a result, we see fewer and fewer people studying science as time goes on. Let me show you some statistics. So if you imagine this class of 100 secondary school students, let's assume that they all have the grades that make them eligible to do A-level physics. Now statistics show us that out of these 100, only 10 will actually choose to do so. Out of those 10, only two will be girls. If we fast forward a few years, we see similar statistics. If you look at an undergraduate physics course, then again, two out of the 10 students will be girls. And this number hasn't changed in the last 30 years. If we fast forward a few more years and look at the job market, we lose half of the girls. We lose boys too at this stage, but we only lose a third, not half. So you can really see the gender gap increasing. So what's causing this mass exodus of people, particularly women, from science? Well, it's a really complex problem, but ultimately it has something to do with the stereotypes that we associate with science and engineering and the people in those careers. As an industry, science really hasn't done a great job of marketing itself. A lot of people don't know exactly what it is that scientists and engineers do or the sorts of environments that they work in. In fact, if I were to ask most of you here today to picture in your minds an engineer, I bet a fair few of you would picture someone in a hard hat or some sort of safety gear. And if you were one of those people, then don't worry, it was not your fault. In fact, when you type in the word engineer into Google, this is what you get. Almost every single picture features someone in a hard hat. It's pretty much the same story for the word scientist too. When you type in scientist into Google, here it's just a mass of lab coats and safety goggles. See, Google's even helpfully suggesting to me here, do you want pictures of people in lab coats? Now, I'm not saying that scientists and engineers don't wear hard hats and lab coats, because some do, but lots don't. I very much doubt that a software engineer is going to have much need for a hard hat. Do you, Vedika? No, not really. But on the other hand, some people expect me to look like Mark Zuckerberg and wear a hoodie and trainers to work every day. I'm not going to deny I do that quite a lot. <laughs> but I work with a lot of people who don't. And it also doesn't mean that I can't be fond of something like nail art or collecting earrings. I shouldn't have to fit into that geek box, and neither should any of you if you choose to become coders. This kind of constant stereotyping has left the UK with a large shortage of scientists and engineers, and we all need to work together to turn this around. We're going to live, give you three things to think about, and if you can take the time to do even one of them, then hopefully this image will look very different in 10 years. Firstly, we need you to stop writing off science as being something that's not for you. 
I mean, sure, we don't all have the genius of Stephen Hawking or Albert Einstein, but that really doesn't matter. Science and engineering encompass such a broad variety of careers. You could be designing the next Olympic stadium, writing the code for the next hit computer game, or even doing something kind of random, like working out the most efficient way of boarding people onto an aircraft. With such a broad variety of careers on offer, we really do need all sorts of people to fill these roles. The designers, the entrepreneurs, the investigators, the developers, the communicators. Science really is for everyone. Secondly, and this one's probably more for us girls, we need to believe ourselves. Currently, only 9% of the engineering workforce is female. A lot of women believe science isn't for them because they're not good enough, but that's simply not the case. Girls consistently outperform boys in all STEM subjects, and they go on to get higher grades at A-levels. But we do have this tendency to put ourselves down and give up at initial signs of failure. And I'm completely guilty of that as well. I've had rejections in my career where I thought, I'm going to give up. This is just not for me. I'm not good enough. But I had family and friends who made sure I kept going. I worked hard and I didn't give up. And we really hope you don't give up either. Please stick with science. We can't accept this 9% figure. We have to change it. We can make it 20%. No, we can make it 50%. Finally, and this one goes for all of us, the stereotyping needs to stop here. This is something that we all need to do, all of us together. Let's stop it with the geeks and the nerds and be a little bit more open-minded. Let's stop putting people in boxes and making assumptions about their personalities based on the things that they do. Just because I'm a spacecraft engineer doesn't mean that I can't be an avid fan of knitting, because guess what, I am. And I'll, let me tell you something, Isis on Chile is actually a really great hula hoop dancer. And in case you're wondering what happened to Isis after her advert was spread around the internet, well, she turned it around by posting a picture of herself with this sign. The hashtag, I look like an engineer, was born, and thousands of women around the world started posting pictures of themselves at work in an attempt to break down the stereotype of what a female in engineering looks like. Even we took a stab at it. After all, we look like engineers because we are engineers. I'm a software engineer, and I help write code that delivers news to the financial world. Sean is a um, spacecraft engineer, and she works on spacecraft missions that will go on to explore our solar systems. And we absolutely love our jobs. So we'll leave you with this. Do you still think we need these to look like engineers? Thank you. Thank you.